Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, those who are online, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for joining uh, this seminar. In this seminar, we will learn about the risk and security uh, boost in finance industry, how these domains create a big impact and how you can excel or build a career in this risk and security domain. So once again, thank you so much for joining and let's kick off the session. Um, to begin with, let me quickly introduce about myself. Uh, so I am Tejas, as you know, I am currently pursuing my master's in information systems. Um, and also right now I'm working with Fidelity Investments as a risk analyst. Initially, I started as a risk analyst co-op where I was there from July to January. And after that, my manager asked me to extend my stay uh, for a few of the critical projects that currently all are ongoing. And uh, since then, like I have, I am working as a part-time employee there. Um, prior coming to uh, Northeastern and Fidelity, I did my bachelor's in electronics and telecommunication in 2016. And right after that, I have started working with uh, Tata Consultancy Services. Uh, hey, you can join. Yeah. And once uh, after completing my uh, undergraduate in 2016, I started working for Tata Consultancy Services, where I worked for five years and two months. Uh, while working with TCS, I worked for various financial uh, domain clients like Citibank, PNC Group, and I have worked on various risk management projects and I have built some risk model. And with that opportunity, I felt that, you know, uh, there is still a lot of things that can be learned in data domain. And I decided to pursue my master's. Uh, I pursue, decided to pursue master's and here I am at the Northeastern University. In Northeastern University, I have taken uh, various courses uh, uh, related to the data, like data science, data uh, DMDD, uh, DADABI, as you all know, uh, the IS students, these are like famous data oriented courses. And I really got to learn a lot of new things uh, with this course. And uh, while searching for, I got a fantastic opportunity to work with Fidelity Investments, where I am working on operational risk team, uh, where I am uh, right, like I have analyzed and built uh, various models. I'll, I'll let you know all the risk aspects in details as I go on. Uh, yeah, this was all about me. Uh, and now let's jump to this session. Uh, so these are the things that I will be going through today. Uh, firstly, we'll define what is risk, uh, what is security, uh, what is the risk management process, uh, the type of risk, the types of security that are uh, present uh, in this industry and then uh, in the end, I will guide you through how you can build a career and how you can excel uh, in this domain. Uh, without any further ado, uh, let's get started. Um, in, uh, first, like, let me tell you why, why risk analysis and security uh, is important in the, uh, for every company. Uh, basically, you can never eliminate risk in the market. You can eliminate the threats uh, in terms of security, but you can never eliminate the risk in the market because without risk, there, no business can run successfully. If they want to, if any business or any company wants to excel in the company, they need to have uh, take certain risk. But it doesn't mean that they need to do a risky business. You can mitigate the risk, you can do certain process, you can monitor them, and then you can decide uh, what factors are beneficial for your company and what not. Um, so this is uh, regarding the importance of risk and security. Uh, before we jump to all those domains, uh, I'd like to ask you one question. Uh, raise or show of hands if you are mostly interested in risk domain. Okay. Uh, like, can I have like show of hands who are more uh, who are here to know more about security domain? Yeah, and show of hand if you are here just for free visa. <laughs> well, I guess that. <laughs> um, so, yes, let's um, firstly understand what risk uh, is in terms uh, in finance industry. So risk is basically inevitable, as you know, uh, it is a possibility of loss, harm or danger uh, to the industry. 
and uh, it is really uncertain like the risk can happen at any given time like you know there are so much aspects like if you run a successful business if you run a very large business there are too many uh, components that you need to think of and that's how like risk comes into the picture um, it is also uh, risk is present like i said uh, risk is also present in all in our personal life as well uh, risk uh, including the uh, finance uh, or the life or the study even if you are a, a master student uh, there is risk involved that you will if you land on a successful job or not um uh, so yeah and these failures if if even if uh, there is a failure in the system it will lead to a very big damage uh, as you know that you know silicon valley bank was just collapsed in few days because they didn't mitigate the risk that they took so that's how that risk is important uh, in running up any business um uh, so these are the types of risks involved in the finance domain. Uh, these are all independent risks, but I have broadly classified uh, into the finance risks because these are mostly involved in, in terms of uh, money and the finance. So that's why like, uh, we, uh, we, are, we can see a credit risk, market risk, liquidity risk. And then uh, these are the risks like compliance risk, operational risk, and technology risk. These domains are these risk domains basically will you will see in every company and there will be uh, officers who are involved in looking into those business monitoring uh, those uh, uh, those risks and uh, they are the ones who derive the plans to mitigate the risk. So uh, even if you don't, I haven't heard of these jobs, but there are uh, the risk department is very huge in every uh, company or business. Uh, let's quickly. Uh, now we will understand that each year is in detail and uh, what are the process or what are the ways that we can mitigate this risk. Uh, the first risk uh, is the credit risk. Uh, it is the risk involved uh, due to the failure or uh, failure of borrower to meet the financial obligations. Um, basically, uh, the bottom line is if you lend someone some money, then it's a risk involved whether if that person will return you or not. Same goes with the financial institution, like they, they provide loans to the customers and essentially they are taking risk of lending the money in advance to the customers. Like uh, the, uh, the, the, there are some institutional companies who take large amount of money, uh, money uh, as, as loans and uh, there are departments uh, who monitor those risks. And if they fail to provide, uh, give you back or if they fail to repay the loans, then yeah, you will also suffer, like the financial institutions will also suffer a loss. Uh, the prime example of the credit risk uh, is uh, the 2008 crisis, uh, whatever happened in 2008. So let me go little deep here and uh, guide you what happened in 2008 basically. So uh, uh, around 2000 and 2001, uh, the Fed Reserve, uh, reduce the interest rate from 6.5 to 2.5 percent and because of that there were too many lenders in the market who purchased the loan uh, who, who took the loan and purchased the uh, homes and basically whatever home loans were there uh, the, uh, the, these banks gave that loans to the financial institutions uh, am i confusing you let me show uh, give some example on the board can the online people see whatever I'm writing here? No? No. Okay. Not really, no. okay, then I'll not use it. So basically, there are two types of financial institutions. One is the uh, credit uh, CCB, that consumer credit bank, uh, where the people like us take the loans, uh, we deposit our money, we deposit our salary, and then we took the credit cards. Like these are the uh, institutions like you know, uh, the, uh, we, we open account in uh, Bank of America, we open account in Chase. So uh, these are the consumer credit banks, and there are also different. There is also a different kind of bank, which is the investment bank, who lends money to the big corporates or the big uh, companies, or the uh, or and these are the institutional investors. So, uh, so what uh, it they did in two thousand one, they uh, the consumer credit bank or uh, the the normal banks where they uh, the they provide the home loans they sold loans to the investment firms like uh, Lehman Brothers like you know that they fall in 2008 so uh, but after uh, giving them the investors initially got a very good profit 
from that loans, whatever they lo uh, sold under loans, you know, I mean, uh, the consumers were uh, repaying the loans initially, uh, they had very good, uh, uh, I mean, the, re the loan repayment percentage was very nice initially, and they thought that, you know, uh, these mortgage, uh, mortgage uh, loans are very beneficial for the investors because they were giving, uh, getting uh, investment returns uh, in higher rates. And what then institutional bankers did, they, they, they force or they uh, pressurize the consumer credit banks to issue more loans. And when the consumer credit bank, uh, banks issued more loans, uh, they didn't have, uh, they didn't check the, uh, uh, the credibility of the consumers. Uh, if they had the sufficient, uh, uh, if their sufficient salary to repay those loans or not, they didn't do much validations. Uh, while providing the loan, and eventually in 2008, when the uh, or in 2007, when the Fed Reserves increased the interest rate, then those consumers failed to repay the loans. And once they failed to repay the loans, uh, the banks incurred the loss. And once the consumer credit bank incurred the loss, they transferred that loss to the institutional or uh, uh, the uh, investment banks. And uh, in the end, all the finance uh, institution or the all the finance market collapsed in 2008. So uh, it is very important to understand why uh, uh, the credit risk. Uh, so to mitigate this risk, uh, we should check uh, the credit score more often. So that's why, like you know, uh, if you purchase a credit card, you will see a score. So that's uh, the that score is very important for this financial institution to lend the loans that they they actively uh, check your credit history before giving any loans and. It is very important to monitor those risks. So it's not that you know once you uh, give the loans, the, uh, once you check something and then you give the loans, the risk will get eliminated. It's not. You have to continuously monitor the risk. And uh, even after 2008, uh, the the Feds and uh, FACB standards uh, initiated like few risk models, which is CECL and CCAR. Uh, so uh, these are the models uh, who. Uh, who intelligently tells uh, whether uh, how much risk is involved uh, in that bank loans. So the next risk is the market risk. Uh, it is the risk uh, that everyone knows. I think market risk uh, is something that many people are aware of. Uh, it is due to the fluctuations in the market. Like if you see that share, share markets, uh, their prices comes low or uh, goes low or high depending upon the sentiments in the market and Basically, uh, uh, they are mostly related to the shares. And uh, uh, to have a good portfolio or to mitigate the risk, you should have the diversification, hedging, and risk modif uh, monitoring. So diversification means you know you you uh, you can't just buy uh, shares of one company. You need to uh, buy uh, shares of different companies into your portfolios, like or the different. Uh, also in do different domains, maybe you can buy some uh, shares from manufacturing domain, you can buy some uh, uh, from the education domain, so whatever, like uh, you, sh you should uh, diversify your portfolio. Uh, they, uh, there is a very uh, uh, famous saying in finance institution that, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket, meaning that you can't have uh, shares of just one big company or just one company. What if that uh, company's uh, shares value goes low, uh, uh, low in one day? So it is very important to have diversified portfolio. Uh, what does uh, the hedging means now? Uh, let me uh, explain you what hedging means. Hedging means uh, is kind of a putting a barricade uh, in front of your investment, uh, or it's like uh, insurance or in uh, of your investment. Uh, to give more uh, an example of this, uh, for example, uh, I run a company in United States. And I want to outsource uh, my IT project to India. And if I say that, uh, yeah, uh, if I outsource my project to any consultancy services, like if I outsource uh, my project to TCS, and if I say, hey, uh, build uh, this uh, this project for me, uh, but I will give you uh, money after six months once you build. And uh, initially, TCS agrees uh, for that payment. Uh, or, or for that agreement, but what? Uh, but what if the prices go down? For example, uh, currently the market rate for one US dollar to INR is eighty-two rupees. Okay, so if after six months, if still it, it stays at eighty-two, it means that 
uh, yeah, TCS will not face any loss in that. But uh, if that trade goes up 83, 84 or 86, then again, TCS will not face any loss. But what if after six months, the rate goes below 82 rupees? TCS will definitely face some losses in that, right? So that's why to avoid those losses, they do hedging. Uh, basically, they put a put contract. What if, like, if, if the cost or the, if the rate of rupees goes below 82, then that contract will help them uh, save from the loss. So that is basically hedging. Uh, to have some contract, if, if your uh, investment goes low, then uh, the hedging will help you uh, reduce the losses. Um, and yeah, again, monitoring risk is very important. It's just, it, it's not like that, you know, if you, you purchase any, anything and you keep it away, no, you have to always uh, monitor the risk. Um, having said that, let's go to the third risk, which is liquidity risk. Um, basically, liquidity risk uh, is a failure to uh, Fail, uh, failure to uh, meet the uh, financial obligations. Uh, actually, I was trying to think of example. Um, so it it states that uh, if you are unable to pay uh, the liquid cash, what is liquid cash? If if you are a financial institution, if you fail to provide uh, the transactions money, then it is a risk for them. For example, what happened with SVB recently? They failed to have that li uh, liquid cash with them. So uh, what, uh, what what happened that you know uh, they they had somewhere around 10 billion, uh, 100 billions of money with them and out of that 80 percent they invested in uh, mortgage ba uh, mortgage based security and other uh, and other 20 billion around 20 billion they invested in uh, uh, government issued bonds and with that they didn't have that much money uh, if if some other uh, big institution withdraws money from their bank then it was very uh, tough for them to give that money because they have already invest, uh, invested that money into certain place. So basically, uh, these financial uh, institutions, where I said like credit, uh, CCV bank, commercial credit banks. So if we deposit money in their account uh, or in, uh, in that bank, so it is a liability for them because it's not their money. But however, uh, they need to invest those money to uh, give interest back to us and as well as keep their operations running. But it's still a liability for them. What if uh, a consumer wants to withdraw that money all of a sudden? Then uh, sometimes they are not able to re uh, give that money back. So that's what happened with S SVB and that is uh, basically the liquidity risk. And to, uh, to mitigate that risk, it is very important to have cash uh, flow uh, forecasting that uh, they should frequently check that, you know, how much inflow and outflow of money uh, you, uh, the institution should, uh, is having from last few years and what are the plans if there is a big institution wants to withdraw money from their account. Um, then they should really have the a balance of uh, investment and uh, debt management uh, where all the portfolio managers should be uh, focusing on. And again, risk monitoring is very essential. Uh, a risk monitoring is basically the potato that goes with every Indian vegetable that we cook. Uh, but yeah, it is very important to uh, monitor uh, that uh, uh, risk in uh, all, all those types. So yeah, monitoring risk is uh, always a bread and butter of uh, the risk analysts and risk managers. Uh, do you have any questions? Third question so far. Uh, then we have operational risk. Uh, so this risk is basically uh, because of the internal process systems or human error. So uh, I'll give one example. Like uh, if if you uh, if operation risk is mostly related to uh, the business continuity plan as well. So if you run a business, how much employees uh, do you have? If the uh, if do you have sufficient uh, space? Uh, in your uh, institution, uh, uh, do you have sufficient resources? Uh, so basically, all those things. So it's not related to the finance, but it is. It is very important, like uh, to check if uh, employee uh, is compliant to work with the industry. So there is another uh, risk uh, which comes with the compliance. Uh, this uh, it will come after that, but uh, 
uh, yeah, that is the compliance risk and operation risk are uh, basically related to the how you govern uh, govern a company. So uh, the mitigation uh, process is that you have uh, you should have uh, a very good uh, infrastructure and uh, policies. Uh, you should educate uh, your employees well, and again, uh, risk monitoring is always there. Uh, next is compliance or legal risk. Uh, it is uh, it uh, this risk refers to the financial loss or legal consequences due to the company's failure to comply with laws and regulations. Uh, this risk arises from factors such as exchange in the regulations, inadequate compliance policies and procedures, and employee misconduct. Um, for example, if how many of you have ever worked in company? Or with yeah, you must have submitted. Uh, you must be getting some courses, right? Uh, the some mandatory courses uh, before joining the company or uh, initial few days. So if those courses are not completed, that is a risk to com uh, company basically. So there are teams who monitor uh, if if you haven't uh, completed those courses or not. Like there are courses related to the fire safety, there are uh, courses related to the cyber security, and uh, like there are a bunch of other courses. And if you are not compliant with that, I mean, if you are not aware of, the, uh, uh, aware of those uh, rules, then actually it's a risk to the company. And again, uh, the legal risk, like legal risk is basically the reputation risk that, you know, uh, if you have some trademarks, uh, you are not copying a uh, product of another uh, another company. So uh, so all those things uh, comes uh, the, uh, under the compliance and legal risk. this i guess uh, okay yeah we have one more uh, risk uh, related to the technology uh, so uh, the technology risk is nothing but the negative consequences from use of uh, use adoption or implementation of new and existing technologies uh, meaning that if you want to use a certain technology you need uh, there are various factors that uh, might uh, your software or your technology might be vulnerable, uh, vulnerable because of attacks and everything so uh, or the bugs, basically, even if you have one line of code wrong, uh, it might screw your entire business. So uh, this risk is uh, also important. There are technology risk officers uh, in every institution uh, to take care of uh, this risk. Also, like I, uh, I like to give one example. Um, so if you run a cloud and if you run like a EC2 instance and so, uh, this cloud infrastructure basically is like you know pay as you go uh, the number of time or the number of hours you use you will be charged it's not a license that you can just put uh, give one time money and use that uh, software so uh, so that's why it's very important to terminate those instances and if you don't terminate then it's a risk to company because even if you are not using that instance company is paying for them uh, and it's a risk for them so that's why you know stuff like that so that's how like you know you can mitigate the risk uh, and how you can mitigate the risk? I mean, uh, the employee awareness programs, access control policies, you can minimize the access of those uh, tools and technologies to this limited people who are well aware and how to use those tools and technologies. And it is uh, run the automated script, uh, scripts to check the bugs, errors, and make sure that uh, your code is uh, bug free and not vulnerable to any uh, other uh, no, hackings or something like that. Uh, do do you have any examples or do you uh, have any questions around this? Okay, so I guess uh, this is all about uh, the risk domain. Uh, before jumping to the security, I would like to uh, tell you about the risk management process. Basically, I call it the risk uh, cycle process. Uh, how a risk is mitigated, how, how risk flows into the organization. Uh, like there are five steps. Uh, firstly, uh, they identify the risk. So uh, they, they, the stakeholders or the senior managers uh, in, in the institutions, uh, they initially and, uh, identify the risk uh, and then they uh, ask uh, the, and they ask their, uh, 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 the officers who are uh, into their domains, uh, once if they identify the risk, okay, this is the operation risk, then they will ask the uh, operation risk team to handle that process. And once they identify, then that risk is then delivered to evaluate and analyze uh, risk to that uh, particular domain or department. 
And if once uh, if they have done, then they prioritize the risk. Uh, it's not that they are just handling the one risk. They have uh, tons of risk uh, involvement, and they are working on tons of other uh, risk management. So they prioritize the risk. Uh, they give certain ratings, and yeah, if 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 some risk is on priority, they try to solve uh, it first, and then they treat the risk. Uh, risk. If 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 there is a risk that which potentially can be eliminated, they do. Uh, they tend to work on that. If if they are not able to eliminate, because most of the risks you can't uh, eliminate all of sudden from uh, your organizations. Uh, uh, you can just monitor and mitigate that risk. And uh, like yeah, again, like I said, the fifth one is the monitor the risk. So if you can't eliminate the risk, you can just monitor the track of risk that if, if that things happen, then what is your action plan? So this is, uh, this is basically the risk management process uh, that involves in every uh, institution. This is a small video. I think uh, it's, it's very good. I, I have watched it and I'd like to share with you.
Yeah, in the last video, you might have seen uh, a forex risk, uh, which is what somewhat I have worked on uh, during my co-op. So I was uh, involved in foreign exchange transaction risk, where I have built uh, the foreign exchange monitoring uh, system and uh, the risk model. And uh, yeah, I'll help fidelity. It's a very complicated task, to be honest. But uh, yeah, you learn as you go. Uh, now let's uh, jump to the security. Uh, so it is basically the fence uh, or the protection against the harm or loss or danger. And it is it is very important aspect uh, for every organization. Uh, they invest uh, large, a large amount of money uh, for the security of their firm and uh, uh, ensuring that uh, all the measures are taken for unauthorized data access or any cyber attacks. Uh, Basically, there are five types of security. Uh, uh, first one is physical security. Second one is ne uh, network security. Third one being information security. Fourth and fifth are operational and cyber security. Uh, let's uh, understand and learn more about each security in detail. Uh, the first one is the physical security. It is the pro protection of, of physical assets such as building, equipment, and personal, uh, personal from threats uh, uh, such as uh, robbery, vandalism, or un unauthorized access. Uh, it includes the measures such as surveillance cameras, access controls, and regular maintenance of those security. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this type of uh, like uh, it won't happen these days, uh, but it, uh, the it is it is very important uh, in terms of security. Like you know, there are not too many thefts that happen these days. Apart from the cyber attacks, uh, next, uh, that's why like cyber security is important. It will come later. Uh, but yeah, this is also a security uh, concern. Uh, the second one is the network security. Uh, uh, this network security is the protection of computer networks from unauthorized access, hacking, and other cyber security uh, cyber attacks. It includes measures such as firewall, intrusion detection systems, Multi-factor authentication and regular software update, uh, updates to prevent uh, vulnerability. Uh, the goal of network security is to prevent unauthorized access to, uh, uh, to the network and protect sensitive data uh, from information and uh, theft. So uh, it is it is not uh, good for any company if their data is uh, lost or uh, uh, or stolen. So uh, so that's why or you know there are um, various uh, websites that can attack the network of any company so that's why like it's very important for them to update keep updated the firewall build their own uh, virtual network so that you know uh, it will be less from uh, from the attacks uh, the third one uh, is information security uh, it is uh, basically all the data uh, uh, related security it is very important for uh, the organization to uh, protect their data from unauthorized access. They build firewalls, uh, they, uh, they have uh, the uh, access control. They usually don't provide too much control uh, uh, or, the, uh, or the authority to all the employees uh, in the organizations. Uh, they keep limited and every time if you want to access that data, uh, you need to uh, raise the request for them. Uh, and now to, uh, and there are a few more measures that you can have encryption technologies, you can have access policies, uh, and controls, and again, you can uh, train your employees about the security awareness and not to misuse the data. The fourth one is uh, operational uh, security. It is the uh, type of security that protects an organizational operation process and procedures from disruptions or interference. It includes measures such as disaster recovery plan, uh, redemptor systems, backup power sources, and risk assessment to identify potential threats and vulnerability. So uh, when there was a COVID crisis, uh, this operational security like, was very important for uh, every organization because uh, not uh, all the company, uh, company employees had the work from home, so they had to work on this business continuity plan and they need to uh, ensure that you know uh, all the employees have the right access and uh, the business in going smooth and they don't have uh, too much issues uh, in running the business uh, when they had given uh, work from home to the to their employees. Uh, 
The final one is uh, also one of the most important security, which is cyber security. Uh, the uh, the Cori College itself, they have a, a dedicated master's degree in cyber security. Uh, it's the protection of computers, data, and authorized access attacks and uh, our damage caused by the hackers and cyber criminals. Uh, and how to um, control uh, or, or take measures is that, you know, you can have antiviruses and anti-malware softwares installed in the systems. Uh, you can have uh, awareness program workshops, so make sure that you don't fall into the phishing trap and uh, you don't access uh, the unprotected websites uh, uh, from uh, the, the, uh, your personal or professional computers. Um, yeah, I'm sure that uh, this kind of security everyone is well about. Uh, so, um, so these are the careers that you can build uh, in the security. Uh, there is cyber security analyst, audit analyst, network engineers, and system engineers. Uh, these are very well known uh, jobs in the market, and uh, the salary range is very good and lucrative. Uh, the junior level basically starts uh, from 85, and then sky is the limit. Uh, the more uh, information or the more experience you have, you will. Uh, be paid uh, according to your uh, knowledge and expertise. Uh, I, I, I believe that you should definitely uh, go and see uh, these careers and have some no uh, build some knowledge around it, and it will definitely uh, help you to land a good job. Uh, these are the certifications that you can do in order uh, if you are searching uh, jobs in this domain. Uh, these are very famous courses. Uh, you can go to their particular websites. Uh, if you want to know more about it, uh, uh, if, like there are many jobs, uh, uh, dis uh, if you see job descriptions of uh, in terms of security, you will find that they have listed uh, these certifications and they seek professionals uh, who have these certifications uh, under their name. So uh, definitely, uh, if you plan to build uh, your career in security domain, uh, have these certifications, learn about it, and yeah, it will definitely enhance your profile. Uh, let's come back to the security domain. Uh, these are some of the job titles. Uh, basically, if you see risk uh, in the job titles, then definitely it, it is associated with the risk management. Uh, the job titles uh, typically are like risk analysts, market risk analysts, risk managers, risk directors, and so on. Uh, their salaries also basically starts around like 80, 90, like for the junior level. And again, like I said, sky is the limit. Uh, you can get as many you want based on your uh, domain and expertise. Uh, here are some certifications if you want to do. Uh, these are basically related to the finest uh, domain securities. Uh, you have financial risk manager, professional risk manager, uh, chartered enterprises, analyst, and CRMP. Uh, these are very uh, renowned certifications uh, that you have, and you can associate. Uh, uh, or you can learn or, or have the certifications if you plan to build a career on risk domain. Uh, it, uh, these days, uh, risk is not uh, just uh, related to the business. Now you need to have uh, uh, knowledge around the data as well. Um, so if you uh, want to uh, develop or uh, make a career in risk, these are other uh, uh, skills that you should own. Uh, first being data analysis and visualization, data visualization skills. Uh, Basically, a uh, risk they measure based on the past data or they forecast, uh, uh, or if they want to do some forecasting based on uh, the data, then that's why like you should have the data analysis and visualization skills. And also, if you know the machine learning uh, concepts, like to forecast the data, we use machine learning models. So if you have uh, knowledge on forecasting machine learning models, like Arima, LSTM, it is very good to uh, for, uh, like have these skills around yourself. Uh, also, like uh, you need to have uh, SQL and data warehousing concepts, right? Like me being a risk analyst, I use uh, SQL every day. And uh, if you uh, don't know SQL and if you want to uh, uh, have your career around risk now, I think you should definitely start le learning or using SQL uh, in your in, uh, in your uh, uh, and build the profile around it. Uh, and also. Uh, if you want to become a risk analyst in finance domain, it is very important to have financial knowledge. Like uh, I am still am learning uh, financial concepts, uh, and uh, every day I have to learn something new uh, related to finance in order to build the risk models. Because 
uh, this field or this these roles are closely associated uh, with the business domain. If you are a technical person, if you are a software engineer, maybe you don't need to have that much. Uh, uh, you, you don't need to know that much. Yeah, if, obviously, if you know uh, the business knowledge, then it's great. But yeah, uh, definitely, if you want to become a risk analyst or risk manager, you, you should closely uh, know the how business runs and how our business uh, decisions, how stakeholders take their decisions, and how you can help them uh, solve their issues. Uh, again, you should uh, if you want to become uh, if you want to have a good resume around the risk analysis. You should definitely have uh, projects which include identifying uh, patterns, traits, and definitely work on KP, building KPIs or the statistical analysis. Um, uh, like uh, this is all about risk and security. Uh, these jobs are very nice. These are very unique, uh, unique, and it is it is very challenging as as well as interesting. I personally like uh, like the risk domain right now. Like I have worked in the risk domain. It's really nice. Uh, you you directly work with the higher management of of the firm who takes a lot of uh, business decisions and basically risk takers are the great winners. Don't take too much risk, uh, but yeah, definitely uh, uh, you should you can't run away from them. Mm. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I do have one. So thank you for giving us such an informative session. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us more about your experience in fidelity investments? Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, most of the risk analysts uh, works on uh, building the monitoring dashboards, uh, whatever uh, the data they had, and uh, they try to forecast or learn the data. If uh, uh, they tr they try to build the models, uh, what happened in the past and uh, are there uh, scenarios that can happen in future as well? Basically, uh, developing the monitoring dashboards, uh, learning uh, the gaps of where, if there are any gaps, uh, if there are any like compliance issues or business issues. Uh, basically, they also uh, the uh, like the risk managers also work on uh, saving the reputation of the firm, like. Uh, even before implementing any new business or the line of business, uh, this risk uh, managers basically evaluate that uh, domain first, give their suggestions, and then uh, uh, these people run in, uh, like uh, the, they run into that new line of business. So even my basically day-to-day -day task is to uh, build the models, uh, learn the past data, uh, and build the uh, build the risk monitoring models basically. Um, analyze the data, give, uh, give uh, and support uh, uh, stakeholders with their decisions, uh, and yeah, this is what uh, I do every day. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, like, what are the tools and softwares that you guys use in Fidelity to like tackle all these risk issues? Okay, so basically, uh, uh, risk managers uh, like. Uh, if they want to visualize the data, they heavily use Power BI and Tableau Dash uh, to uh, visualize the data. They use uh, SQL queries to extract the data from their data source. Uh, they also like uh, right now uh, there is a lot of cloud uh, technologies uh, uh, involved in storing data. So if you know some cloud technologies uh, or uh, like AWS and Snowflake, that is a huge plus because you uh, eventually you will extract data from that uh, and then. Uh, if you know the Python, that is very useful because then you can uh, build some automated scripts uh, that will ease uh, your and the stakeholder tasks. So if you have uh, those skill sets or you can build those skill, uh, skill sets, uh, that will be a very a big plus. Yes, one from online. So yeah. should I say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Arfin, if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Sure, Kaylee, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Tejas, uh, for this informative session. It, it's really helpful. Um, actually, I wanted to check with you regarding the current market scenario. Uh, we are all, like you know, uh, are looking forward to recession or maybe in a, rec in a recession. How is cybersecurity and risk management impacted uh, during this time? And how safe uh, it is to, you know, complete our masters now? Uh, so basically, um... If, if a company is getting impacted due to recession, uh, so it will, 
it it will hold uh, the uh, it basically it will hold the employment of all the organization or basically what is needed uh, but I, what i believe is uh, that uh, you know uh, risk managers and uh, people uh, working in cyber security and security domain these are very important if there is any void uh, uh, or if uh, if if there are less people they will definitely include it and I, I think that uh, if you search on jobs portal, you will definitely see the risk analyst, financial analyst, or uh, the system analyst. Uh, these are all uh, the job profiles related to the risk if you are planning to do that. So definitely check on them. Um, but mostly uh, these, I mean, the jobs will affect that if entire company uh, is not going well. So uh, I like it, it is very difficult to uh, project uh, the uh, it, the project what uh, if these jobs uh, will be there or not or not uh, but it it mostly depends on the uh, how company is going uh, through does that help okay teachers i have one more question i'm sorry this would be the last one yeah no problem Yes. So now that you're working for Fidelity, and uh, I'm sure just like me, there are others who who must have worked in risk and cybersecurity domain. Mm -hmm. So do you think is it, it is possible for you to recommend or suggest or share post on LinkedIn where we can go ahead and apply? Is there a way where um, you can? So, yeah, so basically uh, you can check on the Fidelity uh, job portal. Uh, and if you need any help, uh, referral, I'm happy to provide that. But all the jobs are posted uh, in, in the job portal as well. You can definitely find there. And I believe that there are a uh, few job uh, openings, uh, if not many, but there are uh, yeah, uh, a lot of job openings that I can see in uh, risk and uh, security domain. Do check that and let, let me know if you need any additional information. I'm happy to provide that. Great, great, Tejas. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Yeah, Are there any other questions? So with this, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining uh, here uh, in person and in Zoom. I uh, hope you had uh, learned something out of it. If not, uh, and, uh, learned uh, what, uh, what way were you wanted to learn. Yeah, thank you for joining and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.